We always hear about the legend, Elon Musk's achievements and contributions to science and engineering. This man does the impossible in order to achieve his goals for humanity. After he achieved exceptional success in reusing the Falcon rocket, he set a new plan for reusing the next generation rocket, Starship. This new plan, after its success, will be the first of a kind in rocketry, adding a huge value to its new rocket, Starship, as it will be more secured and practical than the first method. The new method relies on catching the massive rocket from the sky. Despite the difficulty of this method as it sounds, it will lead to significant benefits, as it will enable SpaceX to launch the rocket in almost any weather and achieve unprecedented rapid reusability. Today, we will discuss how SpaceX managed to finish installing and rigging the massive structure of the catching arm in just a few weeks. SpaceX has been busy the last few weeks attaching Mechazilla catching arms to a carriage, and then they started to install this integration of the arm and the carriage to the launch tower. After spending three months assembling this giant device, SpaceX team installed it for the first time on the launch tower, and it was an historic event that got the entire space community together. Mechazilla consists of three main components, the carriage, the catching arms or chopsticks, the QD arms, and the claws. The carriage task is summed up to be the structure that contains the two giant arms. The arms are meant to catch the rocket in midair. Several meters below, the QD arms and the claws that are meant to stabilize the Super Heavy. After knowing the main components and their functions on the launch tower, let's see how SpaceX managed to integrate them and began installing them on the launch tower. The Mechazilla transformation began exactly when SpaceX successfully installed the final section of the Starship launch tower in July this year. Two months later, the SpaceX team finished assembling the QD arms to be lifted to approximately half of the tower, and then they affixed it to two sturdy hinges. Several weeks later, the company added the actuating tip and the claw to the Mechazilla massive structure, besides some plumbing and wiring necessary for the flexibility and movement. About a week later, at the beginning of October, SpaceX began combining the three major components together. They flipped it vertically and staged it to a temporary support structure. Then they flipped the arms into the correct orientation to impel them into the right position on the carriage, the actual structure. After that, they installed two giant cylindrical pins with built-in bearings to leave the Mechazilla assembled and precisely balanced against the support structure and more or less freestanding. A few days later, SpaceX tried on the 20th of October to complete the first step of installing Mechazilla on the launch tower without apparent issue. Prior to the lift, SpaceX technicians staged 12 skates on three of the tower's four legs, two upper and two lower skates per leg. After placing the carriage in the right position, the team was able to wrap its upper arms around the tower and began connecting the carriage to those skates with large pins. However, even after the installation of the carriage and the arms, they will still be lifted by a crane. Why? To see this working as expected, there is a lot of work to be done. SpaceX has to finish installing and rigging thousands of feet of steel cable that will connect to powered drawworks to support the carriage and catch arms, and also to lift the assembly up and down through the tower like an elevator. The arms and the carriage will also need to be mated with a giant cable carrier that will connect the structure to ground and control systems. Discussions about catching Super Heavy started on Twitter when a fan posted a video that has the booster come to rest on a movable pair of arms extending from the orbital launch mount, which Musk describes as a chopstick. He tweeted that the inspiration for the catching mechanism came from the classic film Karate Kid. The launch tower will function like a chopstick holding the starship upright before it launches and catching it as it descends from space. In the uploaded video, the booster aligns with its mount before deploying to stop the descent of the booster they can be seen sliding down the tower until the booster is in the right place. This means that the movement of the arms would require a great deal of precision in both timing and positioning to work as intended. Musk said that they would be able to move during the booster's descent to match its exact position. He added that the catch point would be off to the side for practical reasons, and the booster won't hit the launch mount if the catch fails. After the booster has come to rest on the extending arms with the grid fence, the same grid fins the booster will use to guide its descent will be transferred back to prepare for the next flight. 
and this concept will make the turnaround time less than an hour. While the super heavy booster has fins to latch onto, a Twitter user asked Musk what the arms will grab to retrieve the ship, writing, will it be upper flap wings? Musk said that the boosters have two pins for lifting and catching, although maybe it's better to modify grid fins to take more load. For Starship, something will need to flip out from the leeward side of the top of the ship to do the same there, Musk answered in a tweet. Maybe it's part of the forward flaps, but probably not, he added. Different solutions for different load pads. Musk claimed that they could use the Mechazilla for the first time with the fifth booster, BN5, as the next orbital flight will likely use the fourth booster, BN4. Mechazilla could debut sooner than later. Let us know in the comments. What do you think about SpaceX's Mechazilla catching arm? Thanks for watching.